name of our ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship at Church of the Eternal Hills, and we are continuing with our worship from the Cathedral of the Great Blue Dome. Today we are in Port Angeles, Washington, the Pacific Northwest, where the trees grow so big. I love them. What a perfect setting to be able to share with you the very essentials of worship. We know that when Jesus did his teaching and when he called people to attention, he did so like this, listen and hear. So I invite you now into this time to listen and hear what the Spirit might be saying to you in worship today. As we think about worship, we remember that it's truly about what we focus on. And today, like last week, we are going to focus on the Word of God and how it speaks to us in today's context. As we begin worship, let's set aside all those things that distract us and keep us from hearing that Word. Typically in worship, we do that with a prayer of confessional and an opening prayer, perhaps an opening hymn calling our hearts and minds to listen. Today, I invite you into a time of stillness, a time of listening to your own breath, listening to the words that are in your head and in your heart, and putting aside anything that is unpleasing to God as we set forth on this worship. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your beautiful creation. Call us to your attention, O God. Help us to hear without any distractions the teachings of your son Jesus, the words that you want to share with us for today, and remind us that we are united in spirit even though we are separated by many miles. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning, children. I'm so glad you could join us for worship today. Are you enjoying seeing the different parts of the United States as my family and I travel around? What an interesting time to be able to share worship with you. What I'm doing right now is I'm gardening. It's one of my favorite things to do. I think I've shared that with you before. I love planting seeds and I love nurturing them and helping them to grow, watering them, and then waiting for them to turn into flowers. But you know what's really cool? And it's a great lesson for us. And that is that God has provided for our plants in the most amazing and incredible way. It doesn't really take much from us to keep these plants growing. And it's kind of the way that God has helped you to grow and to become the wonderful person that you are. I want to share with you the secret of the flowers. Over here, I have found a little seed pod. It's actually a plant that's just full of seed pods. Can you see them? There's probably, I don't even know maybe 20 or more seed pods on there, and I came too late to know what that flower looked like. But let me tell you something. This is a really cool thing about God. This plant grows, and then after the flower dies, it just stays like this. And here, the the seed pods dry up, and then at the right time of the year, the heads will tip over, and spill seeds onto the ground. And then they will sleep all winter long. And then the snow from the winter will water them. And the cold kind of cracks open that seed and they start to grow in the perfect time. God is really, truly the very best gardener. I mean, look all around you on any given day and you'll notice how things just grow like crazy without any help from us. If you don't believe that, just look at those dandelions, one of my favorite flowers, and look at how effective those seeds are in spreading. In a little while, you are going to hear the parable of the sower, and it's a lesson that Jesus taught about a man who scattered seeds everywhere and about how the seeds were received or maybe not received by the soil. I hope that you hear that and remember that God provides for incredible beauty all around us 
all the time. Just like you, you will grow and flourish with God's love every day. Are you ready to pray? We'll do an echo prayer. Dear God, thank you for providing flowers. Thank you for teaching me about your abundant love through nature. Help me trust you as I grow. Let's do this part together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll see you next week. In the ball there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree. people who are listening to teach them about hearing and receiving the word of God. Beginning at Matthew 13, verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came up and ate them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they were withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Let anyone with ears listen. Then we move to verse 18, where Jesus explains the parables after the disciples ask, Jesus, why do you teach in parables? Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. 
But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you, O God, for you alone are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, I was walking with a friend on the Granby Fraser Trail, and as we were walking along, we were going from Winter Park towards the resort, and I saw this plant growing, this one. And I said to her, I said, oh, is that horsetail? And she said, I don't know. I've never noticed it before. I said, I think it's horsetail. And then I started thinking, didn't someone tell me that was a noxious weed? So I asked her, I said, I think it might be a noxious weed. And she said, I don't know. I think it's kind of pretty. You know what? It is kind of pretty. But I couldn't remember who it was that had told me this was a noxious weed. That was until I arrived in the Pacific Northwest right here in Port Angeles at my mother and father-in-law's. And I saw that their whole garden had been overgrown with horsetail. It's pretty in Colorado where there's just a few little, you know, sprigs of it and they're kind of swaying in the wind. But it really crept up and flourished in the rain that has been so prevalent up here especially because in the past couple of months, my uh, mother-in-law has been really busy taking care of my father-in-law and she didn't have time to weed. She said it had been cleared out and then the rains came and it just grew unchecked. I was thinking about this parable and I was thinking about how uh, Jesus is telling his listeners, listen, all who have ears, And hear this parable. When Jesus says, listen, it means something really important is coming up. And when he says, all who have ears to listen, he is saying something a little more powerful than just make sure you're paying attention. He was saying, this is a rule that is really, really important. In fact, his parables often revolved around the natural world, around this beautiful creation. It's been really fun to get out in nature and be able to teach some lessons as we go through the different kinds of environments as we are traveling. This parable of the sower is terrific because so many of the people that he was teaching were farmers. They had to grow what they ate, sustenance farmers. It meant that everything they grew they were relying on to help them eat and to sustain their lives. And so when he says there was a sower who was throwing seeds around, it was really actually pretty shocking because in that day it was so hard to get a hold of seeds and there weren't a lot of them that if you wasted them, it might mean that you were not going to have food to eat. And so he tells about this sower who was just carelessly throwing seeds around right and left. Some of it falls on a path and it's eaten up right away by birds. It could be devastating to a family to just waste seed like that. They certainly didn't uh, have the ability to, to put out bird feeders and feed them seed like we do. And then he talks about more seed that falls on a, on a very shallow ground on soil that is maybe perhaps not prepared well. And it grows quickly, but it's scorched up the next day in the heat of the sun. Another waste. It wasn't going to bring their children any food, would it? Then the next thing is, is the seed falls in a place where the thorns also grow up and choke the plants out as they grow. Then finally, you hear about this very... Um, unlikely thing, and that is that the seed falls on fertile ground, and it doesn't just grow. It grows and it produces a bumper crop. A hundred times each seed is grown. What a fantastic tale that is. That would make any farmer happy. 
Jesus then explains the parable, as you heard in the ending of that gospel reading from Matthew. The part you didn't hear were the, par- were the disciples asking, what does this mean? And why do you teach in parables? And the thing was, it was so good for people to engage their mind and begin to listen and think and figure out what all these parables meant. It was a pretty brilliant way of teaching because I noticed that we are still discussing these parables 2,000 years later. This is one of the only times in the Gospels that the Gospel writer takes time to actually explain the parable. And this is how the Gospel writer explains it. The Gospel writer says that um, the seeds are the Word of God. And when they are you know, scattered when the, when the word of God is, is sent out and it falls on ground that is a, a pathway, it's just eaten up. It doesn't even produce anything. It's completely wasted. And then, and then sometimes when it grows up really fast, but it withers in the sun, that's like when the word of God is almost received, but it's forgotten as soon as any kind of trouble or real life kind of sets in. Then the gospel writer says that the seed that falls on the ground that is then choked out by thorns is when the word of God is received and it grows and and somebody responds right away to it in a wonderful way. But then, then hardship comes in and it's like the thorns just choking it out. Then there's that beautiful piece about the the seed falling on ground that was ready and prepared and it brings forth a hundred times. That is awesome. There's so many ways for us to consider this passage. I love to think about the seed being God's love and that we become the sower, that we share God's word and God's encouragement and we do so freely and without concern that maybe it is going to fall on some deaf ears and maybe it will fall on some ground that isn't quite ready for it, but that's not our concern. We're just called to share that, to throw it far and wide and then let God do the rest. I think maybe beyond even that encouragement for us to just share God's love and God's words so freely, we can find a lot of truth in gardening as far as it comes to our spiritual lives. And that is, the soil is so important, isn't it? What we cultivate within ourselves, what we do to make ourselves ready to attend worship or to attend a Bible study or to even turn to the word of God is just like preparing a garden bed for success. You cultivate it, you turn it over, you get it ready to listen. And I think so often when we come to worship, we just rush in the door and we, we make our appearance as if that's good enough. As I explained last week, our different parts of the worship service are supposed to lead us, kind of cultivate our own soil. If we think about our garden bed being our heart and, our, and the soil being how we nurture that and let it grow. But sometimes we really feel like we're just doing our part by getting there. That's why I love this this idea of a garden as being our understanding of our faith journey and our faith life. That we got to stay on top of things. We got to cultivate the soil. We put good stuff in there. We turn it over. We keep it healthy. And that we find places where those thorns are choking out all the good stuff. Like this horsetail has overtaken this garden. It is pretty. That's kind of the way that sin sneaks in. There are things that entice us, things that look wonderful. You know, I don't know what it is for you, but it could be food for some people. It could be alcohol or drugs. It could be uh, the desire to, to have more and, and to hoard things or to keep things to yourself. It may be pride, right? There's so many ways that we sin on a daily basis. And it seems pretty harmless, and it seems pretty, pretty sometimes. And then it gets out of control. And before we know it, instead of having a bed that is 
fully prepared, like good soil to receive God's uh, spirit and God's word and let it grow and produce a hundredfold in our lives, we instead end up looking like this, kind of choked out and weedy. How about you? What lessons do you learn when you're out in nature? What truths do you hear in the parables and how do you grow through those? In what ways do you prepare yourself to receive God's word on a Sunday morning or before you go, go to a Bible study or, or maybe before you even go to God in prayer? Are you preparing yourself to receive and to hear and to listen? These are all things we can learn when we truly tune in and focus in worship wherever we go. Whether you are going to um, think about this parable in a new way, I don't know. But what I would encourage you to do is to engage your mind and to really think and to really receive God's word today. Let it work on you. Remember to keep your garden prepared. I can't do that for you. All I can do is spread God's word around like that seed. You're the ones that have to really cultivate your own spiritual life and really keep things growing in a healthy way. I do want to say that if you find yourself a little choked out by some of these attractive weeds, that you might ask for help. Maybe not from me, maybe from a counselor, maybe from a Christian friend, maybe from a brother or sister in faith. But don't feel like you have to do that alone. It's part of something wonderful about being in a, in a body of Christ is that we do have each other. And we can count on each other sometimes to pull our weeds and remind us that we could do better. May you cultivate your hearts. May you add what needs to be added to your life to make your ground fertile and ready to receive an incredible seed of God's word. And may it grow forth and produce a hundred times. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. You are here.
never stop working. He never stop. He never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. He never stop. He never stop working. He never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. He never stop. He never stop working. He never stop. pray. Oh God, we thank you for your mighty creation, for the beauty that surrounds us. We thank you that we don't need to make any special preparations to worship you besides cultivating our own heart and our own uh, soul to receive your word and your spirit. We pray today lifting up those who are grieving. Hold them in your arms and comfort them. Fill them with peace. We pray for those who are suffering with mental illness, with addiction, from domestic violence, or from loss of wages or homes. Also, let them know you are their shelter, their dwelling place. God, we lift up those who are sick and who are seeking treatments and diagnoses. For those who are seeking healing of many kinds, we pray that you would heal them fully and completely. And now as your children, we lift up the prayers that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've had a lot of metaphors today from the unknown seed that I shared with the children about how God is a great gardener and takes so good uh, care of us, uh, to being ourselves a fertile bed, ready to receive the word of God and ready to focus on God when we come into worship and maybe even thinking about our whole faith lives as being a garden bed and not letting sin grow out of control and choke out all the good stuff. It's been kind of fun getting my hands dirty. I love to play in the dirt. And I hope that you also will take time to cultivate your own hearts and minds this week as you prepare yourself for another great outdoor adventure in the Cathedral of the Blue Dome for next week's worship. Now, may the Lord be between you and me while we are absent one from another. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, 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 it's easy. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. There's nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. There we go. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Let's try that again, fellas. Yes? Yeah? All you need is love. Give me those horns. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. All you need is love All you need is love All you need is love 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 is all you need There's nothing you can know that can't be known 
Nothing you can see that isn't shown And no you can be that isn't where you're meant to be It's easy I can't believe I got that line Here we go All you need is love All you need is love All you need is love 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 is all you need Love is all you need. 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 She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love is all you need. Love is all you need.